Britain has gone all in on its electric dream, splashing billions to get us all humming quietly down the motorway. The government loves to boast about it, with over 82,000 public chargers sporting a massive total of 117,000 connectors dotted across the country. On paper, it's a roaring success, a sign that we're speeding towards a lovely, clean, green future. But what if a massive number of them are about as useful as a chocolate teapot? We found large numbers of chargers plunked in the middle of nowhere, sitting completely empty. Silent monuments to wasted cash. At the very same time, drivers in our bigger cities are stuck in maddening queues just to get a splash of power. This isn't a minor hiccup. It's the story of a system that seems to have been designed on the back of a fag packet. A system that's creating a two-tier nation of EV drivers, the serviced and the stranded. Well, in this video, we're investigating the billion pound blunder. We'll uncover why so much of the UK's charging network is failing with thousands of chargers in the wrong place at the wrong time, leaving drivers caught between charging deserts and urban chaos. We will also look at the changing battery technology that means EVs go much further than ever before and so need to stop far less frequently. In fact, most journeys for the average cars for sale in 2025 now can complete a whole journey without stopping to charge at all. We were all sold a rather lovely dream, weren't we? A future of quiet streets, clean air and plugging in your car as easily as your phone. And to be fair, the government has thrown a lot of money at it. The network has grown by around 28% in the last year just alone. Massive jump that suggests we're well on our way. And for many, particularly those who can charge at home, that's exactly what we got. It's a great story for a press release. Paint your picture of progress of a country leading the charge. But for the actual drivers on the road, the reality for many is often a stark and frustrating contrast. The truth is the UK doesn't just have one charging network, actually has three, and they are worlds apart. See, on the one side, you've got your urban nightmare. Think of the heart of London or Manchester. Here, the raw numbers look incredible, but they do hide a darker truth of congestion competition. On another hand, you have the vast, quiet, charging deserts. These are the rural and suburban spots where chargers sometimes were dutifully installed to tick a box, but where they barely see any use at all. Finally, we have the hugely expensive, reminiscence of the price of petrol at motorway services. At these prices, nobody wants to use them. It's the Wild West. It's a story of profound miscalculation, where an obsession with quantity has completely trampled the critical need for quality and sensible pricing. You know, putting them where people actually want them at a price that makes sense. And the surveys of actual drivers? Well, they make for grim reading. One recent poll found that nearly three quarters of EV drivers have faced some sort of difficulty with public charging in the last year. The most common complaints? Well, first of all, finding a charge is already taken, no vacant ones, or discovering the unit is completely broken. Now, this isn't a small teething problem. This is a fundamental flaw in the system. Turning the simple act of filling up into a stressful game of chance. Despite recent government targets for reliability, we still come across charges in prime locations that have been out of action for more than a month. And yes, we have reported them in to the CPOs. The grand promise is colliding with the grim reality of a network that wasn't built for the people who actually need it. Right, well, let's dive into the first half of this car crash and see what's gone wrong. You see, first, Nobody seems to realise that we actually have three types of EV drivers when it comes down to EV charging. The first are the home chargers, and an amazingly large number of them never charge anywhere else. The petrol and diesel cars can't do that. They can only get fuel from a proper petrol station. Most EVs, over 80% of them, according to ZapMap, 
can charge at home. Now, that's not to say 80% of homes can have chargers. I didn't say that. Simply means that most of the early buyers and leases of EVs are ones who can and do have home charging. But look at London. On the surface, it's the best equipped place in the entire UK. Boasts an impressive 263 charging devices for every 100,000 people. It's more than double the national average. You'd think charging in the capital would be a doddle. Well, you'd be wrong. The huge problem is that not all chargers are created equal. The vast majority of London's network, and indeed 56% of all public chargers in the UK, are the slow units, often between 3 and 8 kilowatts. These are the kind you might use at home, overnight, parked in your drive with a time to charge, absolutely totally irrelevant. They are completely not up to the job for a driver in a hurry, or for the thousands of residents who can't charge at home. This puts the second group at a massive disadvantage, those that cannot charge at home. For them, the result is, to put it mildly, complete shambles. During peak hours, these on-street chargers can be overwhelmed. The most popular times to plug in are between 8 and 10 in the morning and 5 and 7 in the evening. And that creates bottlenecks that perfectly match the daily commute. Drivers circle blocks looking for a free spot, only to find them occupied for hours, because they're so slow. And it's not just the slow chargers. That takes us on to the third group of EV chargers, those on longer trips that just need a quick stop and a really powerful charge to charge up very quickly. Ones that can get you back on the road in well under an hour, preferably even under 20 minutes. Sadly, these are the chargers that are most exploited with prices that verge on the criminal. We're starting to see queues at ultra rapid chargers locations located in supermarkets and service stations within the inner city. Well, this mess extends to some degree onto our motorways. The government had a clear target. They targeted at least six ultra rapid chargers at every motorway service area by the end of 2023. Yeah, they failed spectacularly. By January 2025, only about 80 of the 114 service areas had actually managed it. And that failure in some specific locations leaves massive gaps for long distance travel, feeding the number one fear of every EV driver or potential EV driver range anxiety. It's a classic case of headline chasing targets meeting a messy reality of execution. Building a charger isn't just putting a box on the pavement. It needs a proper expensive connection to the grid. Tiny detail that seems to be conveniently forgotten in the rush. So the government is a long way from getting it right. Oh, by the way, if you're enjoying this little dive into our national charging cock up, do the decent thing and hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. We're always digging into the real world impact of these grand projects. Your support helps us keep doing it. And now for the other side of the coin, which is where things go from frustrating to just plain balmy. The thousands of useless chargers. While some city drivers are practically arm wrestling over sockets, Vast swathes of the country have been turned into charging deserts. These are areas where the charger rollout has, well, technically happened, but in such a daft way that it might as well not have. The postcode lottery here is absolutely staggering. While London has its 263 chargers per 100,000 people, Northern Ireland's got just 35. Yorkshire and Humber has a mere 66. It's not just the number of chargers, it's the type. See, when you look for essential rapid chargers that you need on a long journey, the gap is even worse. Well, Scotland's leading the way with a respectable 34 rapid units per 100,000 people, partly thanks to a more hands-on approach. But Northern Ireland has got a dismal 9.9. .9. Well, what this creates is a country where your ability to own and enjoy an EV can depend on your postcode. For petrol and diesel drivers, all the fuel prices are pretty much identical wherever you fill up, except, of course, motorway services. For EV drivers, our electricity is not there yet. Prices can and do vary wildly. 
If you can charge at home, you're absolutely fine for 95% of your life with your EV. But if not, you're going to have to do some serious research. Now, luckily, this only ever needs to be done once, because once you find the cheapest charging in your area, just keep using it. Is it worth the effort? Well, finding the cheapest might save you over 50% every time you charge, compared to just picking the nearest at the end of the road. But also you need to look at charging off-peak or using memberships. Both of these usually include huge discounts, 20, 30, 40%. We see prices on offer from an eye-watering 93 pence to a ludicrously low figure of 20 pence. Now, choose carefully. Reliability is now improving hand over fist, so finding one work is less of an issue than finding one at the right price. But none of this is anything new. See, back in the 70s, petrol stations sprang up on every street corner and even single pumps in tiny little villages. That also got completely out of hand and they built up a massive number until they started shutting down the vast majority till we are here today. EV public charging is just going through its own expansion and mismatch. This isn't just a feeling. While the private operators hoard the specific usage data, industry reports all point to this massive imbalance. A charger that isn't used is a charger that doesn't make any money. This creates a vicious circle. Companies have no reason to build or maintain chargers in these areas, so the infrastructure never improves. That in turn means fewer people in those communities want to buy an EV cementing these places as permanent charging black spots. This is what went so wrong. A rollout driven purely by maps and targets, not by common sense and a genuine need. So how did we spend billions to create a network that somehow both swamped and deserted? It all boils down to a very British cocktail of panic, poor planning, complete misunderstanding how charging an EV differs from filling your petrol tank, and a complete misreading of how actual human beings behave. The main goal, it seems, was simply to whack in as many charges in the ground as possible, anywhere, just to hit a big, shiny number. What was that? 300 or 400,000 charges by 2030? Well, the political pressure to show progress was huge, leading to a frantic rush. Local authorities and private firms were encouraged to just build, but with far less thought given to building in at the right place or offering them at the right price. This was made worse by a massive data gap. The initial rollout for many public charges was planned without a deep understanding of traffic patterns or where people might actually need to stop. The market was just left to sort it out, and the market did what it always does. It runs to the wealthiest, most packed areas like London, where the return on investment was much more obvious and better. Then they decided to hit the motorway services where people, well, they expected to pay far more anyhow. That has already changed with far more massive hubs being installed in places where now they're actually needed. Even the government has sort of shuffled its feet and admitted to a bit of naivety in its early plans, which is, politicians speak for, oops, made a complete dog's dinner of it. That flagship £950 million rapid charging fund, the one meant to fix the motorway problem, well, as of early 2025, it's aimed squarely at locations where it would not be financially viable otherwise. Well, is it worth putting anything there? It's a perfect storm of poor foresight and letting the market dictate the rollout of what should have been critical national infrastructure. The result isn't a network, but it's a patchwork quilt of mismatched pieces, some worn to threads, others have never been touched, but many actually are exactly where they're needed, and it's now only the price that's keeping people away. So back to the big question, has Britain built thousands of useless EV chargers? Well, all the evidence points to a resounding, yeah, probably. But it also has many thousands of useful chargers that are reliable, powerful, and they are exactly where they're needed to be. The UK doesn't have a single working charging network. No country does yet. It has a deeply fractured system of two or three extremes, but for most of us, we inhabit the middle ground, where the vast majority of us can usually find good, reliable, powerful chargers at a competitive price most of the time. 
it does just take that extra bit of effort. Well, in our cities, we have charger density. It looks fantastic on a spreadsheet, but leads to queues of frustration and a reliance on slow chargers that are often not fit for the purpose people want them for. New chargers here would be very welcome as demand increases. Our motorways are already quite well served. And across huge stretches of country, we still have charging deserts littered with ghost chargers that stand as lonely, expensive reminders of a plan gone wrong. This isn't just an inconvenience. For many people, it's a deep and widening inequality. The government prioritised numbers over strategy. It chased headlines instead of building a smart, user-friendly system. The government and industry bodies now say they're aware of the problems and they are working on more targeted funding. But the question is, can they fix the fundamental flaws already baked into the network? They certainly need to talk to industry experts and existing users to find out which need far more and which are already saturated and coping perfectly well. Can they revive the charging deserts and ease the urban chaos? Well, unfortunately, not until they understand the problem they're trying to solve. See, EVs aren't petrol cars. You can't calculate charging in the same way as petrol pumps. The road to a fully electric future is a long one right now. It has plenty of potholes. But what about you? Are you a city dweller locked in an eternal queue? Do you charge all the time at home and wonder, what's all this fuss about? Have you spotted one of these phantom chargers on your travels? Pop your war stories in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I'm Dave.